Okay, work is done. I'm free. I'm playing some freaking video games, man. Oh, Momodora. Let's go. <sighs> Yo, who is calling me right now? It's after work hours. Yo, Wagwan, Kyle Linux there. Yo, hello? Are you busy? Uh, yeah, I was kind of working on... You ain't busy. I see your ass on Steam just playing the game. What? I thought I went offline. Anyway, I have a netbook and I need help um, because who in the hell is texting me? Like, I'm okay, trying to have a, a glorious conversation and anyway, so I have um, a, a netbook for Windows 7 and I'm trying to get it fixed and um, I just need that to be done um, as soon as possible because I'm trying to watch My Hero Academia and I got time for this. And who got time for this? I don't. You? No, I don't know. You do got time for this actually. So, fix it. What do you expect me to do from all the way over here? Do you not know who I am? I said what I said. Turn around. Look. Look at your look at your desk. How did you Thanks. Bye. I really need to start going offline when I play Steam. God bless. Yo, Wagwan Internet, Kai Linux Daya. So today we are looking at the Samsung N310 or the Samsung NP-N310 depending on uh, the part or model number you're looking at. So this little guy here is a netbook with an Intel Atom N270 processor at 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, it's got one gig of RAM, not very much to be utilized and it comes with Windows 7 starter but we're gonna wipe that completely clean and install a fresh copy of Linux Mint 18.3 uh, I believe, I think it's 18.3 um, and the XFCE desktop environment version. Uh, the reason being is to avoid using too many system resources because I can imagine that cinnamon would make this poor little netbook cry. <laughs> <laughs> Cry very, very hot, fanless tears. <laughs> right now I am testing the boot time into Windows 7 Starter Edition to compare with Linux Mint's boot time when we get to that point. Windows takes quite a bit of time to start up on this system. Uh, close to a minute, close to a minute, just under a minute. I think it's about 50 seconds or so. You'll see on the screen shortly. It's about 50 seconds or so to get fully booted in and then starting programs also takes quite a bit of time as well and we'll get to that shortly but this isn't very surprising when you consider that this machine has an Intel Atom processor from 2009 this particular device was released August 1st 2009 so it's not too surprising that it's struggling with some of the modern day things that we're used to, the speed that we're used to on from our phones and our um, desktops and other laptops. So you see here I fired up Firefox, no pun intended, <laughs> and it takes about 20 seconds total for it to start up on the screen. That is not including loading up pages, I was just testing it starting up the program when the, progr when the GUI is present uh, for the program itself, for the browser. And then here I'm testing the shutdown time which does take quite a bit of time as well but not again nothing too surprising considering the cpu that's inside of this machine so would i recommend this netbook to anyone definitely not the friend of mine that actually requested assistance on this particular netbook it wasn't actually my guy jones who helped me with the intro here you should check out uh check out <laughs> you should check out his channel uh, first chance you get it's just my guy Jones, all one word. 
on YouTube. Funny guy, he does reviews, uh, anime reviews, and he talks about life and culture and different things. Pretty interesting. So check him out. But he wasn't the one who requested this. Actually, it's an older friend of mine. He's you know, in his 60s, close to my, he's around my dad's age, actually. Um, this is his netbook, and he asked if I knew of a way to like kind of speed the thing up or clean it up or anything. So I told him, yeah, you know, I'll take a look at it. So took it home tried out the Windows 7 starter and it eh, felt slow but again not surprising so I ended up running MS config and um, a few other things to just uh, like disk cleanup and disk defragments or whatnot I turned off some applications from starting right away and all that but it still felt slow you know he took it back still used it, it still felt slow to him so took it again I asked him if he'd be interested in Linux so he asked me to install it so I did I ended up getting Linux Mint uh, 18.3 I believe the XFCE edition that desktop environment because it's lightweight and I went about installing it onto the netbook after installing it I had him test drive it for you know for a bit about a day or two and he told me <laughs> you know in all the years that he has had the netbook it had never been that fast to him like he was unable to get YouTube to even load on the windows version like basically the site would load and a video would play but he would just hear the audio and the video i guess the, the frames just could not be processed by <laughs> this little netbook so he'd just see a still image for a while and then it might jump to another still image but he wasn't seeing a video itself so when he ran linux mint apparently the videos do play and he said it's not perfect it gets choppy sometimes but it's way less frequent oh you see this section here so something funny if you're installing linux mint and you happen to have if you just leave the system unattended for a while and the screensaver comes up or the system decides to lock the username to get back in to complete the installation is mint that's the username username is mint and the password is nothing you just leave the password area blank and just hit enter and then it'll let you back into the installation and it'll continue on I was like freaking out when that happened because I'm like, how am I supposed to log back in? But the Linux Mint forums cover that. So, so here we are. Uh, Linux Mint is installed and we are now testing the boot time for Linux Mint. Now, spoiler alert, it actually does take longer for Linux Mint XFCE to boot up than Windows 7 Starter. But that does not actually mean that it's slower. Funny enough, what we found was that programs happen to open a lot more quickly on Linux Mint. Even though it takes longer for the system to boot up, it's as if the system boots up and loads everything at once. And in doing so, you can get to your programs immediately and begin working. Unlike Windows 7 Starter, where your programs take a little bit to kind of churn along and <laughs> and then the GUI for the GUI to uh, appear on your screen. So that's another thing to consider if you care about a if you're into the whole competitive thing, I personally don't care. I'm not really interested in the whole, oh yeah, Windows is better and Linux is better. I don't care. It's a personal preference thing. If you like Windows, use Windows. If you like Linux, use Linux, guys. There's no reason for the war and all of the craziness that some of you guys get into, man. But it's cool. Everybody likes to play for a team. I get it. So it takes about a minute and seven seconds for Linux Mint XFCE to load up on this particular netbook. Because of this, it might put some people off, but don't let that fool you. Because as I said, programs open quickly. Now, this is Firefox opening up, and it only took 12 seconds for it to come into full view. Unlike Windows 7's 20 seconds for the same program to load up. So that's another thing to consider. And also, this is a fresh installation of Linux Mint. I have not updated the system. There was, you know, I didn't check for any updates or anything like that. It's just bare bones out of the box. So who knows if he updates things might open a bit more quickly. You never know. So according to him, as I said previously, to him, everything works more quickly on Linux Mint in comparison to Windows 7 Starter. And he is a happy camper. And, you know, I don't think I can ask for anything else or that he can ask for anything else when that's considered. It does what it needs to do for him. So if you're interested in a netbook, depending on what your use case is, if you're an older fellow or, you know, gal, you know, if you're an older person, and you're not really too into the whole technology thing. You just want something simple so you can go on Facebook and, I don't know, look at pictures of your grandkids or your kids or whatever the case is. Then this is a perfectly fine laptop. If you're going to put Linux Mint on there. And that's not a slight at all the folks. I'm, I'm using the 
phrasing older folks a bit loosely here it's not to imply oh you guys are old and don't know technology no i'm implying that you guys are older and you don't have time for all the frills and all those extra things with the new laptops you really don't care you just want simplicity <laughs> okay uh most of the older folks i know they like to keep it simple and that's why i like them because i like to do the same so if you're interested in that kind of thing I think this laptop's fine. I probably wouldn't do Linux Mint XFCE for this. I'd probably pick something like, I don't know, Bunsen Labs. If you're a more technical user, I mean, you, you should use like CrunchBang, Bunsen Labs, maybe Puppy Linux or something really lightweight. But for those non-tech savvy people who just want to have something that's really small and portable or cute to take on the go, I think this is an okay one. Only if you can get it for under maybe 50 bucks. Uh, and even that's a stretch. Even $50 is a stretch. I'd probably say 20 Because you can find way better netbooks at this point for relatively cheap prices and get better performance out of them. They might have like 2 gigs of RAM or they, they might even have a dual core processor and not just an Atom processor. You never know. So these are things to think about and look into depending on your use case. This little guy, according to my friend, it does everything it needs to do for him, so he's good. So I say look into it. That's really it for this video. I want to give thanks to everyone for tuning in and checking everything out here. And uh, look into this netbook. Tell me about some netbooks that you've used in the past, uh, ones that you recommend over this so that I can let him know about it so he can go check those out. And Linux-specific ones, please, if possible, because he's actually interested in the OS now ever since he's gotten a chance to use it. So I think that's pretty cool to inspire more people to try out new operating systems. So uh, yeah, post your recommendations in the comments or make a video and link back. Whatever you want to do, do your thing, and I'll be glad to check it out. All right? So this has been Kai Linux, and remember, no matter what distro you use, out of many, one Linux. Give thanks. Peace.